Hi Steve fans and welcome back. There's nothing worse than being called on a dive. And in this video, I'll be looking at all the different types of exposure protection on the market. From rash guards, through wetsuits and semi dry suits, to full on dry suits and thermal undersuits. For those here for the first time, my name's Mark. I'm the editor in chief of the Scuba Diver Media brand. And welcome to the Scuba Diver YouTube channel. Take two seconds to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And ring that bell so you get notification of the latest releases. Want some free stuff? Everyone loves free, right? Check out the description below for all sorts of goodies, like a free digital subscription to any of our magazines. Where we can, we'll link you to the products we talk about in the support our channel section in the description. For transparency, we'll earn a small commission each time you purchase after clicking on one of these links. And this will go directly back into making more content for you to enjoy. Now, let's dive into the video. Everyone has their own tolerance for feeling cold. But I absolutely hate it. So for me, exposure protection when I am diving is one of my primary concerns. There are a whole host of different options out there keeping you warm and or protected in everything from warm tropical waters to those of the more frigid nature. First up, rash guards. One of the most basic forms of exposure protection are rash guards. And most manufacturers, including Fourth Element, Scuba Pro, Mares and so on, make their own versions. These are handy bits of kit to have with you on your trips to warm water locations. For a variety of reasons. You can wear them when you're on the surface. Be that on the beach or on the dive boat. And they'll protect you from the sun. As a majority of rash guards feature some form of UV protection. If you do get wet, or maybe a quick swim in the sea, they'll rapidly dry when you're back on shore or on the boat. This protection from the sun is also useful if you're snorkeling. Here you get a double whammy. The rash guard stops your back getting sunburnt and it also gives you a degree of thermal protection as well. Not only that, but it also gives you some protection against jellyfish and other no stings. Now I have on occasion dived in just a rash guard and a pair of board shorts and it is very liberating. After being so used to diving in wetsuits and dry suits, it almost felt like I'd forgotten something. However, I tend to feel the cold, and even though I was in 29 degrees sea waters, I was still chilly after 40 to 45 minutes. On the flip side, I know people who will happily do a week on a liveaboard in the Caribbean, for instance, just using this sort of thing, and feel fine. It's all down to personal preference. Rash guards were at one time quite tight fitting which did put some people off wearing them, but more and more companies are now releasing loose fit, more relaxed rash guards that are not so form fitting. You can now also do your bit for the environment when buying rash guards. Some companies, such as Fourth Element, make their products from recycled ghost fishing nets, so you can look good and know you are helping our oceans. And that brings me nicely on to this new escape range from Aqualum. There are two men's tops, a long sleeve and a short sleeve version, and this eye-catching red and olive green combo. The women's range comprises this long sleeve top and matching leggings with this very tropical pattern so you can stand out from the crowd. Both feature mesh on the armpits for comfort and breathability and all the rash guards are made from recycled polyester made from plastic bottles. So you're helping in the fight against plastic pollution every time you buy one. They also come in recycled and biodegradable packaging including a reusable mesh bag. Just the thing for collecting rubbish when you're on the beach. Let's move on to wetsuits and semi-dry suits. Wetsuits come in all shapes, sizes and thicknesses. Traditional neoprene wetsuits can range in thickness from 0.5mm right up to 7-8mm, to but generally you'll find most manufacturers offering models in the 3, 5 and 7mm categories. Wetsuits can come in various forms. Shorty wetsuits, which as the name suggests have short arms and legs, and full length or steamer suits, which have longer arms and legs. You can then also get suits with built-in hoods, though these tend to be 5mm or thicker. 
Wetsuits work by trapping a layer of water between the suit itself and your body to keep you warm. In the old days, this trap water would continually get flushed through due to water entering and exiting through the zipper, wrists, ankles and neck, reducing the effectiveness. But these days, better seals and insulated zippers mean that trap water remains in place much longer, keeping you warmer. I have used shorties in the pool, but in the open water, I just find that for me, they don't provide the thermal protection I am looking for. I also like having my arms and legs covered up which provides protection from any stinging organisms in the water. But, as with rash guards, it's all down to your own personal tolerances for the cold. A 3ml full suit is ideal for tropical waters. It's lightweight, so it won't take up too much of your luggage allowance, and it's comfortable and flexible to wear, so you won't feel restricted. 3ml suits are usually easy to get on and off, particularly if they are made from some of the super stretch neoprene on the market today. If you're on a week-long liverboard and start to feel the chill towards the end of your trip, as your core temperature begins to drop, you can always chuck a rash guard on underneath to give you that little bit more thermal warmth and protection around your torso. See? Told you rash guards were handy to have. A 5mm full suit is great for when you're diving in the tropics in the winter months, or somewhere like the Mediterranean, where the water can be in the low 20s degrees C. Now these are generally a little more bulky and heavy than their 3 mil siblings. But again, with the super stretch neoprene out on the market now, they're still often easy to get on and off. Some 5 mil suits are equipped with zippers on the ankles to make this process even easier. Pair one up with a 3 mil hood or even a thin hooded vest and you'll be able to tolerate it even when the waters dip below 20 degrees C. A 7mm suit is significantly heavier and bulkier than even a 5mm suit. Often these will have zippers on the wrists and on the ankles to aid with getting them on and off. A thick wetsuit like this will even let you dive in places like here in the UK during the summer months, particularly if used with a 5mm hood and gloves. At this thickness you start to see the occasional accessory appearing, such as a pocket on the thigh for example. Once you get to this thickness of wetsuit, the lines start to seriously blur with semi-dry suits. Most semi-dry suits are made from 7mm or 8mm neoprene, such as those from Apex, Marais, Beauchat, Waterproof and Bear, among others. And they're essentially a wetsuit with more robust seals at the wrist, ankles and neck that prevent flushing, keeping your body heat trapped inside along with a layer of water. Semi-dry suits often have full-on dry suit zips, either plastic or metal, and can have one or two thigh pockets, more like a dry suit, and some have a built-in hood. I've used semi-dry suits in the past which hardly let any water inside at all and they kept me warm and comfortable in waters in the mid-teens degree C when used with a 5mm hood and gloves. One downside to all that neoprene is the buoyancy characteristics. The thicker the neoprene, the more weight you're going to need to dive. So that is also worth bearing in mind. So, that's wetsuits and semi-dry suits. But this being the modern era, there are some different forms of wetsuit available on the market. Aqualung's Escape range also includes 3 and 4 mil wetsuits. The male version, as modelled here by Dexter, and this colourful female version. At first glance, these look like a traditional neoprene suit, but they're actually made from Ulex, which is an eco-friendly composite material made of natural rubber, and then laminated with water-based glue and a fabric made of recycled plastic bottles. They are super stretchy, so they're very easy to get on and off. And this flexibility means they would also be good for surface water sports, such as stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, surfing, that sort of thing. They feature a recycled fleece on the torso for added warmth and comfort, and they've got a semi-dry zipper and silicon bands inside the wrists and ankles to minimise flushing. As with the rash guard range, as well as being environmentally friendly themselves, they come in recyclable and biodegradable packaging. There are then several manufacturers, including 4th Element, Lavacore, Apex, Sharkskin and Marais, making suits that blend a thermal fleece inner layer with a wind and waterproof outer fabric, offering similar thermal property to 2-3mm to neoprene wetsuit. These come in a range of styles, from full suit, long sleeve tops, leggings, to short, short sleeve tops, vests and many more. There are many benefits. They are machine washable, they're neutrally buoyant, they're lightweight, and in many cases, they are made using recycled material, so they're environmentally friendly 
as well. Finally, on to dry suits and undersuits. Dry suits represent the pinnacle of exposure protection, and there are a multitude on the market, from established brands such as Santi, Scuba Pro, Fourth Element, Aqualung, Mares, O3, Otter. The list is seemingly endless. Dry suits come in two basic guises, neoprene and trilaminate, or membrane, as it's also known. Neoprene suits are usually quite form-fitting, and because of their inherent stretch, they can flex as you move. The neoprene construction offers a degree of thermal protection by itself, though you'll still need to layer up with thermal undergarments when you venture into cold waters. These days neoprene suits are often compressed or crushed, which means it has been through a process to reduce or remove the tiny bubbles found in neoprene normally. These can compress at depth, meaning buoyancy is affected throughout your dive, so by crushing or compressing the neoprene before constructing the suit, this characteristic is reduced. Neoprene suits are still heavier and more bulky than their trilaminate counterparts, but should the worst happen and you puncture a hole through your suit, neoprene suits are usually easier to do a quick fix in the field. Trilaminate suits, as the name suggests, are made from three layers of material, usually a durable outer, a waterproof middle and a soft comfortable inner. However, you can also get dual material versions or even those made from four or more layers. Thanks to their construction, these suits are very quick drying and don't present any buoyancy issues due to the compression of the material they are made from. However, a downside is the fact that there is next to no thermal insulation in the suits themselves, so you have to wear appropriate undergarments and due to the nature of the material, they tend to be a little looser fitting than neoprene suits. Take this SEAL SLO1 dry suit from Xdeep, as modelled by Dexter. It's made from a very strong but lightweight and flexible trilaminate. The exposed parts, up on the shoulder area here, the top of the forearms and around the pockets, are covered with military grade 500 denier cordura, and the knees and the bottom parts of the forearms here are reinforced with so-called super fabric, a resin protective fabric that is almost impossible to cut with a knife. Uniquely, the base layer and the protection layers are not bound together, and instead can move against each other, providing an unprecedented level of comfort and manoeuvrability. Once you have your dry suit, you're going to need some thermal protection to wear under it. Now, if you're wearing your neoprene suit in the Mediterranean, for instance, you could probably get away with something lightweight underneath, like 4th Element Xeratherm, or a similar base layer. However, that is the beauty of dry suits. You can alter what you wear underneath, according to the temperature of the waters you are diving in and how much you feel the cold. You can add vests on top of base layers as the temperature drops and when it gets to a certain level, ramp it up to thicker undersuits such as Weasel's Extreme, O3's Point Below Base or Fourth Element's Arctic Expedition or Halo. These can then be combined with base layers if we are talking really cold, like the Arctic or Iceland. If you really feel the cold, you might want to draft in some technological help to keep warm. Several firms, including Thermolution, O3, Santi, Mares and Ursu, make heated vests and suits, which take undergarment thermal protection to a whole new level. There really is nothing else that can compare with that feeling of battery operated heat when you're in seriously chilly conditions. You can even get heated glove liners to go inside dry gloves. Now that is the ultimate way to avoid frozen fingers. What's your take on exposure protection? What do you use to keep warm when you're diving? Leave your comments below and if you've got a question, fire away. Because if we can't answer it, maybe someone in our community will be able to. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can grab a free digital magazine subscription in the description below. As always, stay safe. And if you're going diving soon, enjoy.